Baker, former Clutterholic, founder of ClutterClearing.net, uh, bringing you my weekly vlog about my own clutter clearing journey, which is my weight loss uh, journey. So this week uh, I have gained another pound. Uh, again, I'm not worried. I'm, well, I'm not, not worried. I'm not panicking. I understand why. Um, and uh, I'm on my board this week uh, because um, I'm going to draw a diagram to kind of explain what I what I think has has been going on. It's been a tough week. <laughs> Uh, last week I mentioned that I thought that that actually kind of the root of my challenge um, was to do with rejection and a fear of not being good enough. Went along to my weekly counselling last Tuesday with uh, Marisa, my, my counsellor, and told her this and she went, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Turns out uh, that uh, she... she realized that uh, pretty early on uh, but obviously I had to get to that point where I realized it myself um, and it was it was necessary for me to deal with the, the other layers uh, beforehand um, the parallels with my clients uh, who are trying to deal with their physical clutter in the home is bizarre because I have the same with with uh, with my clients in terms of I may uh, have a, a high suspicion of what is the root of their resistance to letting go of their physical clutter or the root of the cause of their clutter. But there's only so much that you can do uh, to try and highlight this to the, the, the client. They have to naturally go on their own clutter clearing journey. Uh, and discover things while they're on that journey. Um, uh, it, it's it's uh, it's an important element of the self discovery, uh, and and it's the reason why um, I I often have to pause or stop working with particular clients because the resistance to that self discovery is so strong. So uh, yeah, so it, again, strange being on the receiving end of it almost of of. Uh, realizing it's taken me 18 months to kind of get to this point this realization um, and yet my counselor sort of discovered it or realized it uh, much earlier on um, uh, so yeah so it's definitely been a week of um, of deep processing I feel emotionally exhausted there's stuff going on. <laughs> I can almost feel it going on internally. Um, I've had a headache, a permanent headache since Tuesday. Um, uh, and that was when I did the TRE. Tuesday, uh, th sorry, Thursday evenings is when I do my TRE and that releases stress. And I finished the session and I, and I had a headache right from the start. And even though I wasn't consciously aware of what my body was kind of dealing with during my TRE session, um, I was actually thinking about to-do lists <laughs> and shopping lists in my head. But I finished, got a headache, and I've literally had it ever since. I've gone to bed with it. I've woken up with it. Um, I spent uh, Friday uh, in bed uh, in the afternoon after I'd worked with my clients in the morning. That is unheard of. Um, Saturday... I was kind of in first gear. Sunday, I probably got up, got up to second gear. I did work on the garden uh, on Sunday with my husband. Um, yesterday, really struggled yesterday. Um, just the tiredness and 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 the emotion, crying. Um, now I know from when I worked on my own clutter and when I did my NLP training that actually it's okay. Uh, if you are tired and it's okay if you cry there are different types of crying it's not an upset crying it's an emotional crying a release and that's absolutely fine and likewise with the tiredness uh, it's tiredness because my body is using so much energy doing the mental processing that it needs to do um, but it does feel like it's kind of hit me like a freight train this week this realization uh, about the issue of rejection uh, and and not feeling uh, good enough. So the irony is, although I feel terrible, <laughs> and I've felt terrible for most of the week, 
it's a good sign because it means that my my head is dealing with stuff that it needs to deal with um, at a subconscious level, uh, most of it. Um, uh, yeah, and so it's actually really important that I don't resist this, that I just let my body do what it needs to do. It has meant that in terms of the method of my weight loss, um, I'm aware that I've probably been self-sabotaging due to the habit of comfort eating. Uh, that is my go-to response uh, when things are kind of uh, emotionally tough. Uh, and even though I'm not consciously aware of it, that's clearly what I've been doing. Uh, didn't go to the gym on Friday or yesterday because of the headache. Um, just didn't feel able to do anything really um as always this 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 journey will take as long as it takes and again this significant step this week uh i know is an important one and and i kind of need to work through it um i will get to the other side um and obviously the counseling and the tre uh, continues uh, it was great actually that uh, somebody uh, brenda uh, hello Brenda. Brenda left a lovely comment uh, on my video from last week. She said, uh, uh, you are an inspiration. I look much like you at the start of your journey. So it means a lot to see that losing the weight is actually doable. You look very good to me. So whenever you, you call it, uh, you, whenever you call it, you've already succeeded. Oh, bless you. Uh, thanks for broadcasting the journey. You've won because you haven't given up. Uh, one pound up or one pound down is either water or barometric measure. I'm getting used to tracking my process as you do. And the learning and feedback is something that I've avoided before, but realise now will likely be the step I need for weight and clutter clearing. Thanks for sharing. You're more than welcome, Brenda. And it is it, like this week is is it's not even a bad week it's it's a uh, mentally challenging week uh, is how i uh, would describe it there's huge i can feel there's huge internal uh, mental shifts going on that's why i'm so tired that's why i feel uh, quite vulnerable uh, emotionally vulnerable um it's because there's shifts happening and those need to be embraced rather than resisting change. Uh, in the past, uh, you know, you, I would have ignored it or tried to, to, to avoid it. Whereas because I'm on this journey, because I know I, I want to get where I want to get, I have to get through this challenging time. Um, in terms of the, the, the issue of uh, rejection, uh, it's been mulling over in my head about uh, how it kind of sits with the other things that I've learned on this journey. And you may remember that, uh, I think it was around Christmas time, might have been just before Christmas time, I had a, a huge learning in that um, the issues with my parents were to do with emotional intelligence. And I kind of, I, I think, again, I'll be discussing this or, or mentioning this to Marisa when I see her later today for my weekly counselling. But part of the reason why I'm at the board is because I kind of wanted to illustrate how um, there are two sides to every story and there are two sides to every situation. So I'll just do a very quick, very bad drawing. So my stick person. Um, so, on one side, uh, we have my parents, and on the other side, we have me. So, Claire. Okay. So, earlier in my journey, I learned that actually one of the, well, the, the main issue with my uh, relationship with my parents, who, who are very key to this weight issue that, that I've had, I'm talking past tense now. Uh, this is good. Uh, the, the the big issue uh, with with that um, is let me get another pen. Is uh, to do with emotional intelligence. Uh, which I learned is to do with. Uh, basically ability to relate emotionally uh, they don't see things at an emotional level they can't relate to me on an emotional level um, uh, things are very facts fact based black and white um, um, and practical 
rather than emotional. Now, they have had this lack of emotional intelligence, but obviously I haven't uh, had that lack of emotional intelligence and that's not what I see. What I see and what I feel, and feeling obviously is very important, uh, is rejection. Uh, and not being good enough, not good enough. So in effect, what I now know and understand is actually a lack of emotional intelligence is interpreted by me as rejection and not being good enough. Yeah, so it's literally lost in translation almost. Uh, whereas now I have this understanding that it's not that they are rejecting me. Uh, it's not even necessarily that they think they don't think that I'm good enough. It's actually the fact that they don't have this uh, this uh, skill of emotional intelligence. Does that make sense? Um, one of the really important things that I learned with uh, my NLP training back in uh, the early 2000s, uh, my, my, my coaching training, was that people do not generally set out to hurt other people. They do not try to upset other people. So when we say, oh, well, you really upset me, that's not the other person's intention. 99.99% of people, their behaviour comes from a good intention. It's how it's interpreted. So again, their, their actions that were actually based around a lack of emotional intelligence and inability to relate to me on an emotional level and make that emotional connection was interpreted by me, if you like, as rejection and not and not being good enough. That's what I heard, but that's that is not what they were saying uh, or doing. But that's how it was interpreted. Does that make sense? So that's kind of what I'm thinking is it, it, kind of been going on. Because again, what I've learned earlier in my journey about this emotional intelligence that was huge. That was very significant. Suddenly, that made it. It's okay. Not not it's okay. I understand. Uh, again, as always, just because I understand more doesn't necessarily mean that I can just brush away and and um, ignore that. Uh, it doesn't suddenly make it all OK. It means I understand uh, and and it, and it makes a little bit more sense. The pieces of the jigsaw puzzle are starting to kind of click uh, together. Um, so yeah, so um, a lot of a lot of this is is starting to, to click into place. Um, it, it, it was it was interesting as well last week when when I you know after Marissa, Marissa saying uh, you know Hallelujah you've realised, um, and and I was kind of giving some examples of things that I felt that that have been rejection uh, from my from my parents, uh, and she actually one big issue was was uh, my wedding. Uh, my husband and I got married uh, in Cyprus. Um, and my parents chose not to come, um, uh, even though there were two seats on standby on a plane at Gatwick Airport uh, 48 hours before the wedding. Uh, the, the travel agent who was at the wedding, because she's a friend, uh, had, had got arranged, she'd arranged two seats on standby. Uh, they phoned my parents and my, my parents uh, chose not to uh, go to the airport and get on that plane to be at uh, my wedding. Uh, that's a biggie rejection. <laughs> that is a biggie. I'm not good enough. I am not worth the effort uh, for my parents to get on a plane to be at my wedding, which uh, for me was a very significant uh, thing in my life. Uh, for me, father has one job and that is to be at his daughter's wedding and give her away. Um, now, I obviously interpret that as that's rejection. I'm not good enough, actually. Those actions probably came from the fact that they didn't have the emotional intelligence. To them, it wasn't an emotional thing. Um, it was a it was a practical thing. It was actually about control uh, and money. Um, but 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 that's what it was for them. But to me, my wedding was rejection 
uh, and not being good enough. So yeah, so huge shifts, huge learning. Um, no wonder I've had an, an emotionally exhausting week. And, and the, uh, the irony is that it's happening and, and things aren't necessarily consciously going through my mind. It's just that feel, it's almost like um, uh, an engine is, is having to deal with uh, oil instead of water. Does that make sense? It feels like things are going a little bit slower. They're a little bit thicker. We're wading, wading through a little bit of oil, a little mud. <laughs> so it's just going a little slower. So, uh, so yeah, so the trick this week, I think, is going to be not to, not to default to my uh, usual response. For my, res my response for 42 years uh, before I started this new uh, eating plan, my, my go-to response when feeling emotionally vulnerable, when feeling sort of rejected and not good enough, uh, was to eat, to comfort eat. Um, and I've done a little bit of that this week. And so this week, if anything, I'm gonna concentrate on not comfort eating. Um, of just listening to my body. If my body says rest, that is what I will do. I find that hard as well, uh, because I do love uh, my work. So uh, even though yesterday I, I, I did take to, bed, to my bed uh, in the afternoon when I was able to, uh, my brain was still going with work. Um, very much a list by the bed, writing down things, getting them out of my head uh, and onto paper. Yeah, so I think this will be a significant week uh, in my journey um, as I'm climbing the next mountain, uh, and it is definitely a mountain having to get a few extra skills uh, and we'll see what happens. Um, given what's going on with the shifts that are happening, if I can maintain this week, then that will be, that will be my winner. Uh, that will be a successful week. Do let me know how you're getting on. Uh, I hope you have had a good week and uh, we'll take the next week as it comes uh, and I'll speak to you same time, same place next week. All right, thanks for watching. Take care, bye-bye.